And here we go. Game number two, best of three series. Of course, the lead uh, series is being led by Perivision currently. Uh, would be interesting to see what one win are able to do with the draft which they have been able to get for themselves when uh, we are looking at a position one Bristol back for one win. Uh, Mankushi would be playing it and um, well, uh, Squad X uh, would be the mid, uh, mid laner uh, for one win. We will be looking at uh, Sweden Strong on uh, the Bat Rider. Of course, uh, there would be respect on the Shadow Demon and we will be looking at Cloud playing the off lane for uh, the side of one win. Uh, for Perivision, uh, yep, Dukalis uh, would be on uh, Jar well, it, it is uh, the Disruptor. Uh, we will have DM on uh, Doom. Uh, of course, it is going to be no one playing Storm Spirit. Uh, there would be nine class on his techies, and Crystalis would be playing an Alchemist. So this is what we have for uh, lined up for us uh, in game number two. And uh, well, let's see if one win are actually able to go ahead and defeat uh, the side of Perivision, who are currently on a roll. They have won about three matches in a row now: two against OG, one against one win. And this would be their fourth match when they would be feeling very happy uh, with the way the couple of matches have progressed for them. So two runes for uh, both. No, it is actually three runes. Uh, the only uh, rune which went into the hands of Perivision was on the Alchemist. So it is three runes which has been claimed at one win. Uh, excuse me. At the starting of this game number one. Or game number two, uh, rather. Um, so an, a, a good start. Uh, how about Sand King mid against uh, the Storm Spread? I think Squadix should be able to do decently fine here. Uh, would not and uh, would not be in too much threat of dying. What um, of what what is being offered by the Storm Spread? And of course, with his uh, Sandstorm, would be able to do a decent chunk. Now he has gone with the Sand Shroud, which uh, gives him increased radius and grants Sand King invisibility. So uh, that's, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how effective that's going to be. Because majority of the time, um, I have seen the other facet uh, being taken by the, sa by the Sand Kings in the mid lane. Uh, but this is a different situation where Squadix has gone with uh, the increased radius. And, uh, well, it totally depends upon the later on matchup, right? The invisibility would be greatly appreciated um, in the later stages. Um, and the increased radius of Sandstorm, of course, he can clear a much uh, or he can occupy a much larger area wherein Perivision will have to think twice before going ahead and engaging. Now, in the top lane, we are looking at um, a Timber Saw plus the Bat Rider going up against uh, Alchemist and a Disruptor. Um, this lane should be pretty decent for the side of one win. Um, once there are a couple of levels onto the Timber saw. He did go with uh, well. He did go with one point in reactive armor already. So a point in whirling death, a point in reactive armor. So his HP region is going to be pretty decent. Uh, just has to work on a couple of items. Would go into a Kaya as his first choice of item after he gets his uh, boots. Maybe he goes for the arcane boots, uh, depending upon the situation. But yeah, by the looks of it, he is going to go into arcane boots onto the timber saw. In the bottom lane, we are looking at uh, a Shadow Demon plus a Bristol back going up against a Doom and uh, a Techies. Uh, now, I think Bristol back does fine in this lane, right? Uh, there is a lot of magical damage, of course. Uh, the HP based damage, which is thrown out by Doom whenever he hits him with the Infernal Braid. Uh, um, what, how much damage does it do? 1% max HP as damage and uh, base burn damage is what 20 so a nice skill to have uh, you know all these high tanky heroes do take a high amount of damage when it comes to the infernal raid we are approaching the three minute mark it is going to be nine class who is going to give up on the idea of getting it for himself and it is going to go into the pockets of uh, shadow demon who is able to claim the water lotus for himself and in the top lane it was claimed uh, by the bat rider so uh, both the Water Lotus going in the side lanes into the hands of one win who have had a pretty decent start uh, to this game number two. Uh, no first blood, uh, no kills have happened on the map as yet, of course, that uh, we are witnessing by a kill score of 0-0. Zero to zero. So both the teams are really taking their time in the initial stages of the game, uh, getting the farm up, uh, more, uh, majorly focusing on the last hits and denies. 
and uh, well now uh, cloud is going to be in a bit of trouble here but i think he should be okay uh does have he did have to use his uh, magic stick charges but eventually he's going to be okay has now what 12 stacks of reactive armor so as his hp region is going up drastically uh should be able to do just fine uh would be able to walk out of the acid spray as well uh pulling all the creep waves um pulling all the creeps to himself so a bit of a farm trade coming in between uh, crystallis and uh cloud and when i think it's going to be timber so would be really happy with the way the game is actually approaching at the moment is able to get some solo experience for himself in the lane currently and would be doing just fine as the game is progressing already at level four has a couple of points in whirling death and um, he might just go ahead and level up uh, his reactive armor on his second point no he does go with a point in timber chain so timber chain uh, he has a couple of points in whirling death and a point in reactive armor onto the timber so in the early stages now on Mankushi, what are we looking at? Two points in Quill Spray and uh, one point in the Spellac. So he's saving one point in case if he wants to make aggressive move. Uh, he does finally go ahead and level up the Vicious Snakes in Uh Will be not going after any hero. Yeah, would be able to get the distance. Uh, and um, both of the heroes from Perivision would be a walk, able to walk away. But this is actually giving out a lot of free farm uh, to this Bristolback in the early stages. Uh, while as we're looking at it, Perivision, all their cores are uh, leading the network chart currently. Uh, with Alchemist sitting at 30, 100, Doom at 24, Storm Spread at 24. Um, the Radiant Heroes not, are not too far behind in that context, are doing decently well in terms of gaining the farm for themselves. Um, it is going to be Power Threads, and now it is a rotation being made by student strong not exactly sure how that rotation was going to work because he did go in dp uh, to the bottom ring exactly yeah that's what i feel right nine class gave a right tip to the bat rider as in what exactly was that move or the question is how exactly was that going to work now uh it is going to be uh Squadix who goes ahead and takes that tumble um in the mid lane wherein there there was assistance provided by Ducalus and they were able to finish off the mid lane so first blood going into the hands of perivision in game number two, wherein uh, no one is off to a great start, already at level six. Uh, so, yeah, he would be also be able to get uh, the illusion rune for himself. So, we might be looking at some rotations being made by the Storm Spirit now. Is able to quickly go ahead and uh, farm up that creep wave for himself. And, uh, well, they are going to check into that they have a couple of stacks working for them. So in case if there is an invasion, Storm Spirit can actually go ahead and invade. Um, well, they are going to be finding respect lurking around in the area. There would be uh, well, that blast off committed as well, and they would be able to finish off. So 2-0 to zero is the score uh, currently favoring the side of Perivision. They would be able to get a nice juicy stack here for uh, no one who would be able to claim it. Uh, some more experience and gold going into his pocket is progressing towards... Uh, well, his uh, power trades is what I'm assuming would be built up. It's just a natural item for the Storm Spirit. Never seen any other item other than power trades on the Storm Spirit. Well, right, so the power trades are completed. Uh, Squad X is still lurking around the area, would be able to get a couple of last hits for himself. Uh, pushing out the wave, not letting the damage hit his, uh, not letting the damage come to his uh, tier one tower. So uh, doing a great job in the mid lane on the side of one win. Uh, in fact, all of their cores are doing a decent job uh, at the moment. Uh, Bristleback uh, still with 3200 net worth is not doing bad himself. Uh, let's look at the itemization. Does have his power threads completed? Is working into his Aghanim scepter as his first choice of item. On the other hand, Alchemist has been just given a completely free lane. Already at level 6, working towards his, uh, working towards his Radiance directly. Uh, and by the looks of it, he's going to have a freaking 10-minute Radiance, brother. Um, yeah, this is going to be a very fast Radiance coming out from this Alchemist. Now, there is a killing spree by no one in the mid lane. Of course, he's just styling at the moment. Uh, would be able to get another kill onto the Squad X, wherein... Uh, uh, there was a rotation which was made uh, by Ducalus and 9 class is still lurking around in the area. So they do want to pressure this uh, tier 1 tower now. A long zip in coming in from uh, uh, the Storm Spirit wherein a nice flame break which did stop Techies from getting his blast off off. 
uh, but now it is going to be a glimpse wherein they are going to send the poor Timbersaw back in his own way. Squadix is trying to get a kill for himself in case if he is able to. Uh, but no, no one uh, with understanding there are no uh, disables available on the side of uh, one win is going to, well, it is just going to be um, the trade-off between the two supports. Well, initially they were, they got a couple of kills. Where did they send the Timbersaw back to? In the top area of the map uh, with uh, that glimpse. And uh, yeah, the team fight, uh, let's see, 3000 net worth lead for the side of Paravision, but at least they would be happy that they were able to get a kill onto uh, the Shadow Demon. Now, it is going to be Squadix who has been gone upon. Uh, there is a glimpse which was committed, so they would be sending the Shadow Demon back. Um, but again, um, not enough uh, time or skills in order to save the life of their mid laner. So, uh, Squadix takes a tumble. I believe this is his third death of the game. Yeah, this is his third death of the game has no assist to speak of so no one has had a pretty beautiful lane though there has been a very good assistance coming in from Ducalus he has uh, actually been the catalyst for all the success uh, that Storm Spirit has been able to have in the mid lane uh, now Mankushi is being gone upon by the Alchemist I'm pretty sure he cannot finish this kill on his own though uh, but again with the assistance of DM uh, and uh, the glimpse coming in from Ducalus he has been sent way back but again he would be able to catch up to him and the Doom is, of course, going to kick in. He would be... Yep, he's already dead. And, in fact, it is going to be Nine Class who comes in with the Sticky Bomb and able to finish the kill onto the position one from the side of uh, One Win. So, he takes a tumble in the bottom lane. Looking at the net worth, it is going to be the two read up. Ouch. Another kill uh, by no one. This time onto the Bat Rider who is still finding his way to his level 6. Uh, Blink Dagger, of course, is quite some distance away. Uh, but no one is going to be a big problem for the side of one win in the upcoming minutes. Uh, already at level 10, it does have his Witch Blade completed. So his damage output is going to drastically increase with the magical damage he's able to do. And uh, with the Catapult Wave, I don't see any defense coming in from the side of one win. Uh, are they going to give up on their tier 1 tower? No. Uh, there is going to be Sweden Strong who will go ahead and come and try and defend the tower for his uh, with his best capabilities but uh, would not have enough damage in the tank. So it is the tier 1 tower which has been claimed by no one in the mid lane. Uh, would be very happy. Uh, 5000 net worth lead 11 minutes in for the side of Perivision who, are, who have uh, gained a substantial amount of lead in this game number 2. Uh, very early on in the game. Now, uh, we will, we are looking at what a 12-minute radiance as discussed and uh, he will have it after this creep camp. Uh, just needs about 295 more gold and he has it now. Right, so the radiance completed on the alchemist who would be uh, going ahead and farming pretty decently and no one is just going to continue the aggression dude. He is just not stopping already with a kill score of 6 0 and one 12 minutes into the game so every two minutes no one has been getting killed on a map i'm just talking about averages but it is still a, a very huge average uh, a kill every two minutes technically when we are we, st we reached this level six at about what the six seven minute mark or maybe the eight minute mark but after that uh, it has been a complete storm spread show uh, no one doing a great job in the mid lane at the moment uh, still a very difficult hero to handle um, the Storm Spirit did go ahead and commit with his invisibility rune. And now they are going to go after the timber. So understanding that, Cloud is trying to make his way, way to make his way out of the area. And they were not able to get the glimpse of him. So we'll have to go ahead and give up on the chase. So timber saw at least going to survive with his life. Uh, but a lot of pressure is going to be coming uh, his uh, towards his tier 1 tower. Which he would uh, technically want to defend. Sitting on the high ground, throwing out the chakram. Not showing his face to the side of uh, Perivision. Of course, there is a... Well, there is a disruptor in their lineup, so why wouldn't he be scared? Uh, already at level 7 on the disruptor when we compare it to supports. Well, we are approaching the level 7 on the side of supports of one win as well. Now, finally, we have level 6 on the Shadow Demon. So, uh, we are good to go for a team fight for the side of one win. They are smoked up as uh, two at the moment, only showing cloud in the lane. So, Understanding that uh, one win aside are up to something, uh, it is going to be Perivision who are going to be playing a much safer route. In fact, we are looking at a three-man smoke coming out from uh, 
side of Perivision. They might be targeting the Shadow Demon. And of course, it is the Storm Spirit who directly goes in. Doom has been committed. And they were able to get the kill. Now it is going to be, well, the Disruptor who was able to commit. And uh, really, uh, no fight to be had now. No one would be able to make it out of the area. They would be at least able to get a kill onto Tukalis. Uh, but uh, with the lack of disables again. This is what I was talking about when the drafting was going on. They don't have too many disables. Yes, there is the Sand King. Uh, but what after that? Uh, how exactly are you going to stop these TPs? Uh, wherein no one is just feeling very confident. Does have his uh, Kaya completed after his Witchblade. Once uh, the Shadow Demon is dead. Once the Bat Rider has already committed the Lasso. And then there is no further catch. Now they also would be able to get a kill onto the Bat Rider. Again it's a good kill to have. It is a support going down. With a Blink Dagger and Radiance completed on the Alchemist already. Um, looking at the net worth chart. Alchemist of course would be at top. With uh, about 11,600 net worth towards his name. Uh, followed by the Storm Spirit with 8,600, but then it is uh, uh, the Radiant Heroes who are finding some trouble. Doom himself is sitting at 7,000, uh, but again, with Devour, he will be scaling up pretty decently. One of the best scaling heroes in the game of Dota. So, scaling is never going to be a problem for Perivision. Of course, no one um, is playing a Storm Spirit who scales very hard into the late game. And on the side of one win, uh, who are we scaling on? Is the problem? Is that uh, the pistol back who is still farming his way to his uh, Aghanim Scepter? About 200 more gold away from it. Should have it um, after another creep wave. Yep, he will need another creep wave to work with. But in the meantime, uh, Crystalis was able to get a kill onto the Bat Rider. So nowhere is safe for the side of one win. And uh, Perivision already um, have gained a significant amount of advantage in this game number two sitting at 13,000, 14,000 lead currently and the kills are just going to continue for the side of Perivision. Already the kill score is 13 to 2. Uh, we are looking at uh, what uh, Storm Spirit, no one. Um, yep, he's going in to complete his uh, Sanj and Kaya, just making himself more tanky, uh, more status resistance, more damage, more HP and mana region. Everything that Storm Spirit could possibly ask for is being given to him by Sanj and Kaya which he will have completed in about 106 gold. So, uh, another item upgrade for the side of Perivision and we are just not seeing the things happening. Uh, again, uh, the lack of lockdown as well is what you get when you go ahead and pick all these tanky cores to work with. And it is a three-man smoke being committed by Perivision, similarly by the side of one win as well. And uh, apparently the team fight might go ahead and break out in near the mid lane. But then the smoke is of course going to break on the Bristol back. No one would be able to walk away from the area. It was uh, Eclipse committed, not doing anything in that team fight. Swordex is, uh, he was saved by Shadow Demon for a second there. But now it is uh, the Disruptor coming in with his Static Storm. They are able to already get a kill on uh, to the Bristol back, well onto the Shadow Demon. Bristol back is still very tanky in his own regard. He's trying to walk away from the area, but the damage coming in from no one is more than enough. Now there was a lasso which was committed, immediately the lasso has been broken by the techies and uh, yeah, four heroes down for the side of uh, one win and they were not able to get anything in return. So now uh, the network lead has increased to 18,000 uh, for Perivision and uh, this game again, uh, similar to the previous game, looks extremely difficult for the side of one win. Uh, right, so um, they gained over 2,000 gold into their pocket and one win lost about 600, so make it an exchange of around 2,600 and uh, zero experience gained by one win and 4,000 by the side of Perivision. So uh, things are not looking too bright, people, for one win. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the strategy is. They will have uh, the Aghanim Scepter completed on the pistol back. Uh, let's see if this changes the game. Amplified damage rune on to Storm Spread. No one. Uh, with this game already, uh, is what's sitting at. Uh, what is sitting at? 7 0 and 7 is the score for no one currently. Alchemist with 3 0 and 2. Um, the only deaths on the side of uh, Perivision have been the two deaths on the Disruptor. Other than that, no hero has died, including the Doom. So. Yeah, the, well, of course, they only have two kills on the map, both on the Disruptor. Nothing much to speak about. 
for the side of one win and uh, yeah they're just uh, running around the map trying to uh, gather whatever farm they can for themselves right so it is a 21,000 net worth lead against a pistol backliner wherein he does have his Aghanim Scepter completed already he's working into his uh, Black King bar as his next choice of item would be uh, interesting to see when exactly he gets that completed and uh, how much of an impact those two items are going to have in the fate of uh, these fights from one win who have not been technically going their way as yet. Right, so another zip in. They were able to get the vision onto the Shadow Demon, but yeah. Uh, no one is not going to, well, he did go ahead and jump onto the high ground when he would not be able to, well, Shadow Demon walk the other way. So, yep, they would not be able to get any catches with the use of this Amplified Damage Rune onto the Storm Spirit. Now, uh, as we're looking at it, the Radiant team entirely are playing in the Dire Jungle. They don't want to be in the area of the map wherein uh, it is too dangerous. These are dangerous spaces. For the side of one win and uh, yeah they are just going to be continuing farming uh in the side of uh in the dire jungle now they have completely occupied the area altogether uh while we are looking at it it is perivision who are doing a similar move they have completely occupied the side of one win uh but with a 21,000 net worth lead they can choose to do whatever they want on the map isn't it Now, uh, finally, we do have uh, the Blink Dagger completed on Sweden Strong. So there is a form of initiation uh, which they can go for. Uh, getting a lasso onto a Disruptor would again be amazing. But uh, you are still against four heroes who are going to be dishing out a lot of damage in these team fights. All right, so the 21 Wisdom Rune, uh, the 21 Minute Rune is going to be spawning soon, uh, the Wisdom Rune. Uh, let's see who goes there and takes it. Well, it seems like the Dire team are not interested. And uh, we are going to go into the Rosh pit. And this time around, I think they will be giving the Aegis over to the hands of no one. Uh, he is on a big kill streak. Uh, really does not want to die. And Storm Spread would be picking up the Aegis of Immortal. I think it's much better. He's one of the best Aegis carrier in the game itself. So giving away the Aegis into the hands of Storm Spirit is going to be the most logical move, which happens. Instead of Crystalis, it was uh, given over to no one and they are going to rotate. Into the top area of the map. Well, there would be, they would not be finding any heroes, but at least they would be able to shove the lane in. And uh, grab that uh, tier 2 tower, which is standing in the top area. They have already taken care of the bottom tier 2 tower. So there is no objective to be had. They, have, they still have the tier 1 and the tier 2 tower. Both which need to be taken down from the hands of uh, one win. So uh, that's going to be the target for Perivision in the next upcoming couple of minutes. And I really don't think there is anything stopping them from uh, taking these objectives. Kill score is 17 to 2. Uh... Pretty kind of a slow game in a context. We are just looking at no one uh, getting kills all across the map. Of course, he was able to get a kill onto the mid laner, onto uh, Cloud as well. That is the off laner. And now we are looking at Storm Spirit, who's already got like, was able to grab his hands onto the Bat Rider as well. So, uh, ouchies. Uh, really ouchies, brother. Uh, right on. So, Crystalis is uh, going to go ahead and assault the tier 2 tower. Really, uh, no respite for the side of one win. This is actually worse than game number one. At least in game number one, we did see a little bit of fight back coming in uh, from the side of uh, one win. But game number two has been a complete disaster. Not exactly sure when where one win lost this game. Was it in the draft? Was it in the laning phases? Um, well, uh, by the looks of it, it's everywhere. All right, so a 24,000 net worth lead. Perivision right on track of uh, knocking out one win from the tournament altogether. Already, as we're looking at it, the majority of the Radiant heroes are either stuck in the base or on the corners of the map. And uh, 
not willing to show their face against the side of Perivision. Of course, they are working with the Disruptor as well on Perivision. So any heroes who shares his face and wants to escape, it's going to be nearly impossible for them to do so. Right, so most, uh, well, it's more farming a bit now. Uh, they have the ages available for another two, uh, 2 minutes and 28 seconds. So in case if they choose, they can go ahead and make some impressive moves on the map. Now with the region rune as well. Uh, well, th that's another good rune to have on Storm, isn't it? Burn out all your mana or use the region rune. Get all your mana back up and get more aggressive, get more kills. Uh, that would be agenda for uh, no one currently. They, they did get a blast off on someone on techies. No, it was just a farming blast off, I guess. Right, so no one has already gone into the Radiant base uh, single-handedly, is able to get a kill onto the Batrider. Still has the Aegis to work with and a region rune, so yeah, he activates the region rune. Gets all his HP and mana back, and now is it going to be the Timbersaw? No. Yep, it is going to be Timbersaw who is going to be taking the brunt of the damage. Does have to commit with his BKB. No one just with the physical damage is able to... No, uh, the, there was a successful disruption now. Where Tech is coming into the fight, did go ahead and commit with his ultimate. And now the Sand King with his uh, BKB trying to stay there, but uh, to what avail? Really to what avail? There is uh, the kill onto the Shadow Demon as well. Three heroes going down. Of course, there are no buybacks to be committed. They would be able to get a lasso onto uh, the Doom. But again, the Doom was already committed onto the Bristol back. Still, no one does have his uh, Ages of Immortal for another one minute. So, is not uh, is not afraid of the death. In fact, he wants to die. He wants all his mana back. So, trying his best in order to die, which he's able to do so successfully. But now, this was the BKB reveal coming in from the bar from the Bristol back. So, which uh, really does not amount to much. Uh, we might as well see the GG call coming out. 25 to 3 is the kill score. Uh, yeah, it's GG, guys. It has been a GG for the longest of periods, really. No hope for the side of one win, and it is only some formalities which were being completed for the side of Prairie Vision. So, a great performance from Prairie Vision throughout the day, wherein they were able to go ahead and provide us. Uh yeah, dude. Right, so uh, game technically uh, over now, and uh, it is going to be, well, uh, the last tier 3 tower. They have already taken down two sets of racks on the side of Perivision. A long zip in coming in from no one, they will be able to get their uh, damage onto, well, they are able to get their uh, hands onto the squad X, who really, but well, that was a mid laner, by the way, not a support. So, squad X does go down, and uh, the top area did go ahead and commit with his BKB, really mattered to nothing. And yeah, the game is pretty much, uh, are they calling it GG now? Uh, there is a nice lasso coming out uh, on the Doom. The Bristol back coming in, doing a decent chunk of damage. Well, they would uh, not be able to get any kill as yet on the side of uh, one win. In fact, they are not well. They would be able to kill off the Disruptor. 29 to 4 is the kill score at the moment. The buyback had to be committed. There is a buyback from both the Bristol back and the Techies. And uh, well, uh, with mega creeps coming in oh wow uh -huh. ducalis enigma galaxy uh mindset is what is the response yeah getting all these tanky heroes which uh, literally do nothing um now the game is uh, which is already well this game has been over for the longest of periods and uh, yeah nine class did go ahead and fall in this uh, engagement and uh, are we looking at the gg call not yet Still waiting, still waiting people. We are waiting for the GG call to come out from the side of uh, uh, one win, uh, who are kind of still, well, they are, these are some charts going on. Both of these teams know uh, that the game is technically over. And uh, yeah, we are just kind of just waiting for the final formalities now to be taken can care of. Can we show that? Right, they now call it GG. <laughs> Finally, uh, right. Uh, uh, well, a, a great, a great showing coming out from Perivision, who are able to claim the series 2-0. Uh, 
and uh, they would be able to go ahead and proceed and go or, or go ahead and face off against liquid uh, in the semifinals which